had to say goodbye to my daughter um, who was leaving to go back to school. I was home a little bit for the weekend. So, yes. So we were talking about yin and yang. And, um, for instance, in the shoulder, you have um, feminine energy and masculine energy. It'll be different quantities if we're talking about the front of the shoulder or the back of the shoulder on the left side or on the right side. And so there are different combinations of that. And yin and yang is a, um, uh, an interesting way of looking at things. We were talking about body parts. So yin is organs. That means that they are working 24 hours a day, like your lungs. Your lungs never stop working. Your heart doesn't stop working while you're living. And so yin organs are always active. And the yang um, are, in French we call them viscères, so they're like the, the, um, the sacs that are in our body. I can't think of the right word in English. Um, for instance, the stomach. And yang um, vessels in the body work sometimes and rest at other times. For instance, the stomach is going to work when you've eaten something. So that's when it's going to be active and actually doing its, its functioning. And when you don't eat something, when it's gone down, when the food bowl has gone down, then your stomach is resting. So inherent to the notion of yin and yang is that yin works all the time and yang works and rests and works and rests. Mm -hmm. Um, those are some qualities to yin and yang. And so we use these um, notions of yin and yang in Touch for Health to help us determine if we're not going to fix as we go, if we're going to do kind of a global view of the energy circulation. It gives us an opportunity to look at, okay, well, what's happening with the uh, yin energy in the body and what's happening with the yang energy in the body. And sometimes we can see patterns. Um, in Touch for Health 2, we're going to be qualifying unbalanced energy as either an over or an under energy. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes we can see that, for instance, the yin is in under energy it's tired, it's been working too hard, and the yang is in over energy. Not all of the meridians, but, you know, uh, a certain number of meridians. Or it can be the opposite, or sometimes it has nothing to do with yin or yang, but this is something that we can look at and talk about in a touch for health balance. So yin is kind of your inner experience, you know, what's going on inside of you. How are you dealing with uh, this this goal that you would like to accomplish in your life, but that for a reason or another isn't happening spontaneously. And so that allows us to explore certain aspects of ourselves innerly. Or if it's the yang, then that allows us to look at how are we reacting to what is outside of us? And what is the action that we are putting into this goal setting? So how are we feeling about the goal and what are we actually doing and materializing about that goal? Those are just two aspects, yin and yang. Of course, there are many, and that's where we're in the educational model where we will simply talk about the qualities of yin and yang and ask the person who is receiving the balance, well, you know, what does that uh, mean to you in terms of your goal? So in Touch for Health 2, uh, we do do a more specific goal setting. So a goal, uh, when we're working on a Touch for Health 2 balance, is a positive statement. It is a positive statement that I, um, that I want to be reality. For instance, um, let's say that I have... To give a talk at a professional meeting and I'm a little bit intimidated because my boss is going to be there and I have you know a colleague who uh, sometimes makes um, little comments about my performance my performances at work and so maybe there's that issue as well um, this is a hypothetical situation I'm talking about huh and 
I have my meeting that will be coming up uh, next week. And so I would like to be able to live that in a positive manner for myself rather than being blocked into how it's always happened in the past and to be over-focalized on my colleague who's going to, you know, the next day tell me everything I did wrong or being over-focalized on the fact that my boss is there and that this could have implications for me. Those are realities. Those two people will be there. But do I need to over-focalize on it? Mm -hmm. That's the big question. So in the past, I've over-focalized, and that's what I know. And so my brain goes, woo, you know, professional meeting. Wow, watch out, you know, watch out for the boss, watch out for the colleague. And so if I want to live this experience in a healthy manner um, with my self-responsibility, then it's to open up the blinders and say, how how could I live this event in a different manner that will be positive for me? And that's where we go do goal setting. So it could be I we start always with an I and it's in the present tense. So I share my ideas freely um, and enthusiastically. It could be that perhaps. That's what I'm unable to do, what I've been unable to do in the past and what I aspire to do in this meeting because maybe I have some ideas that are really great and that could help our company and that would move things forward. So perhaps it's I'm sharing. Mm -hmm. It could also be um, this aspect of looking at things, you know, instead of over-focalizing on my boss and my colleague, I could be, I concentrate on the subject matter um, contributing to the collective work. Maybe that's what would be positive for me. And, you know, this can go on and on about so many different possibilities. So that's what's important about um, self-responsibility is that I, as a touch for healther, balancing with somebody, I can't know what that what would be best for that person. It's only that person who is the expert about him or herself and knows what's best for them. So I need to ask them, you know, if you could live this experience otherwise and it would be a healthy experience for you, what would you do? What would be your main action in that? What is your goal? What do you want to accomplish in that meeting? And then we say it with the I, I, and then the verb in the present and the complement, um, the subject, etc. So that's positive goal setting. So it needs to be personal with the I. It needs to be positive. Um, it's good to have words that have a positive feeling to them in there. Um, it can be um, precise. Sometimes if we get too precise, the goal is like three lines long. So oftentimes we'll shorten it down, but we know that those other notions are there with the goal. And it's possible. So if... I talking about this meeting, I say I ignore my boss. It, that's not going to be possible. I can't ignore my boss during a professional meeting. I have to listen to him. So that's not really a, a positive goal setting, even though perhaps I would like to ignore him so that I don't think about the fact that he's listening to everything I'm saying. But the reality is he is listening to everything I'm saying. So it would be how do I express myself in a manner that is um, appropriate and that shares all this creative energy that I have in me so that the meeting can be a joyful experience. That's what goal setting is all about. And we can do that about different situations in our life that we're living. And that kind of makes the experience different, which is lots of, which is much better for us rather than staying with a, a, a negative experience. So. So that's goal setting. And in, like I said before, we're going to be working with what we call um, over and under energy on the meridians. And so in order to do that, we need a way 
to differentiate between over and under energy. And that's when uh, we start learning about alarm points. Alarm points are linked. There's a, a point, um, either one point or two bilateral points, a uh, one bilateral point. So it's two points, um, one point, but on both sides of the body. There, I'm going to say it the right way. <laughs> Maybe I need to goal set to say things clearly at this point. And um, by touching these points and testing a general indicator muscle, we can see whether that meridian has over energy. Um, so sometimes when we test a muscle on a meridian, let's take the lung meridian. We just saw that we have the uh, middle deltoid. So sometimes at the muscle test, when we test it, it unlocks. And that says to us there's an imbalance on, uh, in the energy on the lung meridian. But we don't know if it's an over or an under imbalance. And then when we test the alarm point with an indicator muscle, if it unlocks with a light touch on the alarm point, that qualifies the imbalance as an over energy. Sometimes, however, uh, when we test a muscle, let's take the rhomboidus, which is on the liver meridian. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. Hold on a second. Excuse me. So if we take rhomboidus, which is on the liver meridian, and the muscle locks, And then when we touch the um, when we touch the liver alarm points, which are here and here, if it um, unlocks the indicator muscle, that means there was not a an imbalance when we tested the muscle, but we do identify an over energy with the alarm point. So sometimes you have a meridian that's affected in both situations and sometimes the over energy is the only indication you have on the meridian and the third situation is that we can have a muscle that unlocks but that is okay on the alarm point so let's take another one that's easy for me to do here while I'm sitting here let's take um, middle trapezius so let's say that when we test it the arm unlocks that spleen but when we test the alarm point which is here on the side with an indicator muscle it locks and that would indicate to us an under energy mm -hmm. so by looking at the over and under energies we can start to see emerge certain energy patterns that are either balanced or unbalanced and by identifying um, major unbalanced patterns in the global outlook of the 14, of the 12 meridians, excuse me, we can choose a manner of balancing that will necessitate only balancing one muscle or one meridian if we're working with more than one muscle per meridian. And we call that a one-point balance. And the advantage of that is that we're, we're looking holistically at the situation rather than doing segmented balancing as fixed as we go. The fixed as you go is a holistic balance because we follow a certain path, a certain order of the meridians. Huh? Whereas when we're in a one-point balance, we're going to be testing everything, getting the general picture, and then choosing one um, meridian to put as a priority, one muscle or one meridian as a priority, to balance that. And if uh, we check and make sure that if we balance that one muscle, that it will, in effect, balance all the other muscles that are unbalanced, whether they're in over or under energy. So that's something that we learn and look into in Touch for Health 2 class. And we have two types of um, schematic 
uh, considerations we can look at. We can look at the wheel, the meridian wheel, how energy circulates in 24 hours. Hold on a second, I gotta go in the right direction for you. There you go. How energy circulates in the 24 hours. And the other is according to the five elements. We talked about the five elements when we were doing the color balance. Mm -hmm. And so um, when we're talking about five elements, we're going to uh, put a priority on the yin meridians to be balanced first. Um, but of course, if there are no unbalances in the yin meridians, then we will work with yang meridians. So. The central and governing vessel meridians are always balanced at the start um, in, a, in a type of fix-as-you-go manner. So we always balance that because they're going to influence the 12 other meridians since they are these kind of like um, saving accounts of yin and yang energy. So um, that's why we balance them at the start. And that kind of explains the theoretical work that we'll be doing in Touch for Health. It's always um, a moment where the students kind of have this kind of like, wow, look on their face. <laughs> in the first Touch for Health 1 class, they're so excited about the fact that they're feeling things, that they're testing muscles, that it's working. And so they're really enthusiastic. And in the, the second Touch for Health class, it's like all of a sudden things start to fit together. You know, the pieces of the puzzle start to fit together. And it's like, wow, okay, I think I'm starting to understand the link between all these things. Yeah. So, um, yes, that's pretty much so what we do. Oh, I'm sorry. The cross call for integration is in the Touch for Health 2 manual. I sometimes... Um, have it in my mind that it's in the three, Touch for Health 3, but in the French manual, it's in Touch for Health 2. Sometimes there's a difference from one country to another if we cover something in two or three, but we do cover the whole matter uh, worldwide. Mm -hmm. So there is a little technique um, that we can look at now to balance ourselves, which is in the Touch for Health 2 manual. It's called Cerebrospinal Technique. It's a way of reinforcing the abdominal muscles. So we're going to look at that. Um, it's In my manual, it's on page 29, but it could be in the English version on a different page. So we can use this while we're giving a balance if the straight abdominal muscles is the priority, or we can use it even outside of a balance if we know that we have a certain weakness here, like we have a stomach, our organs are not really held uh, in place. And so we can, I'm just going to lower it so you can see my stomach. So if we have a bulge in this area, then we know that the abdominal muscles can be reinforced. And this is a technique that helps us to reinforce them. There are also exercises in the book that are smart ways of doing abdominal exercises because sometimes certain abdominal exercises do more harm than good. Mm -hmm. So, um, I'm going to go back so you can see my full head. So what we do is we ask the person to put the extremities of their fingers along the central midline of the scalp. It's the sagittal suture. And we ask them to gently slide their fingers away and slide their fingers back. And we do this several times. It's more of an intention of a movement than a real movement. And it's very light touch. So you don't want to be manipulating cranial bones. We're just pulling a little bit on the skin away from the sagittal suture and back to the sagittal suture. They said it should be like you're just pulling a little bit on the skin of the skull. Okay. 
So if you are doing um, work at the gym or at home on your abdominal, muscle, uh, abdominal muscles, you can experiment with this technique. You can do it before you do your abdominal exercises. Well, the first thing would be to say, see without it, how many can I comfortably do? How many of my um, abdominal exercises do I do before it starts to burn? And then uh, the next day you can do this cerebrospinal technique, gently pulling the skin for about a minute, uh, 30 seconds to a minute. And then you do the same exercises as you did the day before and see how many you can do before it starts to burn. And you'll see oftentimes a difference. You will have the capacity to do more exercises by doing this preparation beforehand. So if you're into abdominal exercises, that could be a really great way. Or if you need to work on this area in your body so that the abdominal muscles hold the uh, belly organs in their place, then this can be a, a really good way to, to reinforce your, your healing capacity in that area. So there is an exercise um, that I'm going to read to, in French that is a smart way to do abdominal exercises. So we're going to read that here now. L'exercice suivant peut améliorer les abdominaux et renforcer la correction. Demandez à la personne de s'allonger sur le sol, les pieds relevés ou posés sur une chaise afin de soutenir le bas du son dos les mains sur le côté ou sous la tête, les yeux fixant un point au plafond derrière sa tête. Demandez-lui sans quitter le point des yeux de soulever sa tête et ses épaules à environ 5 cm du sol et d'être consciente de la contraction des abdominaux quand sa tête est relevée. Elle ne devrait pas céder de ses mains pour relever la tête. C'est important ça, parce qu'il ne faut pas tirer sur les cervicales. Donc, elle ne devrait pas céder de ses mains pour relever sa tête. C'est la contraction des abdominaux qui permet de relever la tête. Demandez-lui de répéter l'exercice plusieurs fois. And so, with this uh, cerebrospinal technique, they said it gives energy to the abdominals by pulling the skin on the sagittal suture and by doing this exercise. So you put your, your legs up on a chair or um, you lift your feet into the air and you will be putting your hands on the side or under your head, but you will be not using the hands for the contraction. And you're lying on your back on the ground, so your legs are bent, and you just lift the upper portion of your body uh, about five centimeters, and what's going to lift it is the contraction of these abdominal muscles. It's not the hands lifting, it's the contraction of the abdominal muscles that lift the whole upper body. So those can be um, some pretty good things to use. Yeah. And that's pretty much so what's in the Touch for Health to manual. We'd already talked about ESR for the future and about the um, pain techniques. We do have the color balance that's in the Touch for Health 2 manual. We've already done that um, during the evening, during the night. And so that's also there for um, working with, it's one of the first times we'll be actually working with specific emotions as well when we do a color balance. So Let's take a look at those emotions together, page 24. So we'll be, uh, the emotions are classed by the element, that means by the color. And we talked about fire, for instance. We know that we're doing the IKC balance thon at heart meridian time. And so if we look at the element for heart, it's fire. And we can see that quality, po uh, positive qualities um, positive emotional qualities of the fire element are liberty of action, enthusiasm, and autosufficiency, being autonomous. 
There are also negative aspects which we need to let go of in the fire element, which can be aggressivity, um, exhaustion, um, hmm, high expectations for oneself, um, and then um, trying to get other people's attention. And we have this for each of the five elements. Maybe we can, to finish the hour in the UTC um, minus one spot, maybe we can look at the emotions for those other elements. So for Earth, which is yellow, the positive emotions that we want to encourage and develop in ourselves are relaxation, joyfulness, inspiration, reasonable actions and reactions, calm, uh, being open to the world, and exaltation. And the negative aspects um, that we want to free up, um, I'm translating from French to English, so please bear with me if I haven't chosen the exact word that is in the English manual for you touch for healthers out there. So the negative aspects of the earth element of yellow are blocked emotions, a feeling isolated, um, a lack of um, sentiment, a, a lack of emotions, um, feeling empty and having an empty head. For the metal element, which is white, the positive emotions that are to be developed are feeling clear, open, pure, innocent, um, full of light, um, shining, and free to open up. And the negative aspects which are to be freed up and eliminated are rigidity, sterility, being uh, stiff, uh, hiding oneself, desolation, uh, denying our, prop, our own needs, yeah, denying our own needs, um, not looking face to face to reality, you know, uh, fooling oneself, that's what I mean, and a lack of vitality. For the water element, which is the color blue, the positive, ocean, uh, uh, the positive qualities that we want to develop are the sense of an inner guide, um, that little voice in us that tells us, you know, yeah, that's, that's where you want to go. That's what you want to be doing. That's what you are. Um, but it's a positive inner voice. We have an interior um, resourcing. We have being reasonable or logical, uh, tranquility, and satisfaction, feeling satisfaction. The negative aspects will be being exhausted, fear, desolation, addiction, and trying to achieve the inaccessible. Um, hold on a second. Juno. Sorry, had one dog eating out of the other dog's food bowl, so that's a no-no. <laughs> that makes problems between the dogs. <laughs> Problems between people as well, but in this case, it was the dogs. So we have the last element, which is the wood element, and it's green. So the quality, the positive qualities that we want to develop are inner peace, self-affirmation, um, being in an energy of starting things, and growth. In the negative aspects, we have stagnation, incapacity to 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 materialize things, to, to get them moving, and an incapacity to finish certain tasks. Yes, so that's the color, uh, the emotions that we can work with on color balances. And when we set a goal and we do the color balance, we'll be seeing different aspects, either positive qualities that we need to develop in order to achieve that goal, or negative aspects that are, are hindering us and not allowing us to go towards our full potential. And so all of this is a, a educational model, so it's helping us learn about ourself and our behavior in a certain situation and what's going on inside of us. Huh?
So that's the um, color balance. And we're at a point now, it's 3 p.m. my time, which means that we can go from the UTC minus one time zone, ooh, all the way over to the UCT minus two time zone. Let's take a look at what countries are in that time zone. This is the last hour that I'll be spending with you for a little time because afterwards we're going to be in Canada and the United States and South America. So UTC2 is also a very, very small area. We have Saint-Jean, Terre-Neuve, and Labrador in Canada. Mm -hmm. So I just want to check out the... I know we have some Canadians doing some balancing. So I want to just check out the um, website and see if I have any live balancing going so I can see myself. Um, and I don't see any other live streaming at this point, so that means I need to keep going with you. Okay. And the last uh, subject that we have in Touch for Health 2, which we've already experimented together, is the time of day balance. And we'll do a time of day balance here, and then we'll talk about it. So it's 3 p.m. 3 p.m. is the small intestine meridian. Mm -hmm. We're moving towards bladder, but we can already do the small intestine. So when we do a time of day balance, the first thing we do is we activate our yin and yang energy. And we do that with the neural lymphatic points for the central and governing meridians. Okay, so it's this zone for the central meridian, it's this zone here, so we're gonna go ahead and massage that. You've probably seen me do this, I've already done this two times, so you're getting used to it. Huh? And we do that for about 20 to 30 seconds. This gets our yin energy moving. And it balances um, over and under energy on the yin meridians. Then we're going to be massaging at the base of the skull on each side of the spine. So we're not on the bones, we're in the mushy part beside the spine on each side of it. I'm just going to drink a little water because I'm thirsty. I've been really up on water today. Then we stick out our hands, stick our thumbs out, and fold the elbows, and where that goes. Those are between second and third ribs, and a little bit further from the sternum than other points, but these are the ones we do for the governing vessel. This is helping getting our energy, our yang energy, moving and balanced. Of course, it also does have effect on the organs associated with these vessel meridians. So the, when we did the central, it was the brain, and now we're doing this one, it's the spine. So these are pretty good ways to, to work on those themes. Just in general. And it can also be a way to work on specific goal setting. So we're going to... Stick our arms straight up, fold at the elbows. We're on either side of the spine between the second and third dorsal vertebrae. And that's where we're going to be massaging the neural lymphatic for the governing vessel. And that way we're balancing 
our yin and yang energy before we're going to be doing the time of day balance. This is the kind of the first steps of the time of day balance. So we always do that. Whatever time of day it is, we always do those four zones. Okay, so we're in the small intestines and we're going to use the quadriceps. So what we're going to do is we're going to rub the neurolymphatic points. Let me change down so you can see which is on the lower end of the rib cage, all the way from the center there. Uh, don't um, don't apply pressure on the the bottom of the sternum. Start a little bit lower. So we stick our fingers in and we move them. We take them off, stick them in a little bit lower and move. These are the neurolymphatic points for the quadriceps muscle, which is on the small intestine meridian. And the same thing, and we keep going. Be careful with your floating ribs. Don't, you know, make them hurt. Go with light, lighter pressure on the, on the floating ribs. And down to the end. And normally, if we um, were able to massage our back, we would have back neurolymphatic points for these, and it's all the between um, 8 and 11. So we can't really reach those, and I don't have anybody here, and so I'm doing self-balancing, so I'm just going to redo the front ones another time. Okay, that was a vigorous massage. That's what we always do for the neurolymphatic points. And now we're going to be holding the neurovascular points for the quadriceps, which is on the side of the head. So you go up from the top of the ear to where the skull starts to curve. And we're going to just put our hands as if with the pressure that we would put on a closed eyelid. And we're just going to kind of settle into that for about a minute. I'm going to close my eyes. You can either keep your eyes open or closed. Just gonna blow my nose there. I can feel a connection between the small intestine and my cold. While I was holding these points, um, it was kind of like uh, tingling, and so um, that's the way my body has to tell me, "Yeah, this is implied," you know, in, in what's going on with your cold small intestine. So it goes from the outer edge of the pinky down the back of the arm and it's going to stay on this side and then it goes behind the shoulder blade and it's going to do some zigzags back there but I can't show them to you because I can't put my hand back there. It comes up the side comes onto the cheekbone and then goes over to that little indentation which is just in front of our ear. Okay, So we're going to trace that three times on one side and three times on the other.
Down on the other side. go. And that is our time of day balance. So if we did this later on today, we would be doing the neurolymphatic for the central merid vessel meridian and for the governing meridian. And then we were doing the next meridian, which would be uh, the neurolymphatic, neurovascular, and the meridian tracing for that, which would be urinary bladder. And so this is a way also that we can work with uh, jet lag. So when we get in the airplane, we look at what time it is at our destination, and we do the time of day balance according to the time at our destination. And that's what I did this summer when we went to Peru. And so uh, uh, in the airplane, I did every two hours, I did the time of day balance with the meridian that was active in Peru. And this during my my travels. And I did that maybe like four or five times. There were times when I was in a film and I didn't do it and times when I was sleeping. But that was enough that when I got there, I uh, slept through most of the first night and certainly slept through the second and the other nights just fine. So we can also use that when we have shifts, like people who uh, work in factories where they have night shifts, day shifts, afternoon shifts, or for nurses who have to do sometimes do night work, then they're in the morning and then they're in the afternoon. So this is also ways that we can um, balance our energies in the body to, to um, be more, um, to, to have more well-being during those shifts, which normally are a little bit difficult for us. And that's pretty much so what we do in the Touch for Health 2 class. So we're going to set that aside. And we're going to take a look at the Touch for Health 3. So we have um, new muscles in Touch for Health 3. We have a way of working with um, physical postural deviations. Excuse me. Drink some water. If you get tired, drink some water, and that helps you wake up. And then we have, um, like we said, like we've already seen, the um, temporal, uh, excuse me, the tapping on the acupressure points for chronic pain. And we have something called the gates, as well as the balances for the past. And we talked about the ESR work in the past, um, but there are two other balances for that. We also have the sound balance. And we look at um, nutrition for the elements, the, for the five elements. Instead of looking at nutrition for the muscles, we look at nutrition for the five elements. And we learn how to um, check the Chinese pulse. So maybe we'll start with that, if that sounds good to you. I'm going to go make a cup of tea, so I'm going to take a short break. And I'll be right back. See you in about five minutes.